Dirty dealings, corporate battles, consumer woes. This is Evening Five. Sapporo Energy announced that its Mexican unit has been declared bankrupt after it failed to restructure its debts with creditors within the stipulated time frame given by a court in that country. The unit, Sapporo Energy Mexicana Sociedad Anonima Promotora de Invasion Capital Variable, is a wholly owned subsidiary of Sapporo Offshore and Sapporo Mex, which are both ultimately wholly owned subsidiaries of Sapporo Energy. The order was made by the Second District Insolvency Court with residents in Mexico City and jurisdiction throughout Mexico according to Sapporo Energy's boss filing. It said Sam had filed a restructuring on December 19, 2022. By a judgment dated April 18, 2023, the court declared Sam to be in a commercial insolvency and the conciliation phase was initiated. However, the group said Sam is challenging the court's decision and is preparing an appeal against the bankruptcy declaration on the grounds of improper rejection by the court of the extension request of the conciliation phase. Additionally, SEM stressed that a restructuring agreement had been reached and communicated to the court before the issuance of the bankruptcy judgment. The group, however, maintained that SEM currently does not possess any assets, conduct operations or engage in any of the group's ongoing projects in Mexico. As such, the group does not anticipate any significant losses from the winding up of SEM. Sapporo Energy has been operating in Mexico since late 2012, where it has worked closely with Mexican state-owned petroleum company Petroleos Mexicanos. Sapporo Energy, a PN17 company, is on the verge of bankruptcy as it continues to progress in its restructuring plan, which includes efforts to resolve its unsustainable level of debt and amounts owed to trade creditors. Having missed the February 29th deadline to release its fourth quarter results, Country Heights Holdings is likely to be slapped with a trading suspension. According to its boss filing, the company explained that the results are delayed as the Malaysian Department of Insolvency is still in the midst of verifying the claims amount between the creditors and Mines Waterfront Business Park, an indirect wholly owned subsidiary of the company that is in liquidation due to non-substantiated claims. The management is also in the midst of negotiation with the bank on the defaulted loan. Country Heights says that it is addressing the challenges and targets to announce its fourth quarter results this month. Its securities will be suspended on March 8th following the expiry of the suspension deadline and will be uplifted on the market day following the issuance of the outstanding quarterly results unless otherwise determined by Bursa Securities. Country Heights acknowledged the concerns regarding on timely updates of the group's financial announcement but said it is optimistic that it will turn around by next year. It points out that this is the first time the group has missed the deadline in 40 years. Country Heights had announced its default on the payment of the 89.67 million financing facilities in August last year and attributed the default to differences in cash flow timing due to delays in client payments, resulting in temporary cash flow constraint. For the nine months of FY 2023, the group's net loss widened to 14.69 million from 13.34 million a year before, while revenue rose 19% to 37.7 million driven by the sale of completed properties units. Fertility care company Alpha IVF Group on Friday began taking orders from investors for its initial public offering to raise up to 466.5 million ringgit. The IPO comprises 364.5 million new shares and 1.09 billion existing shares. Alpha IVF's eight cornerstone investors, which include organisations such as AHAM Asset Management, East Spring Investments, Lion Global Investors and Value Partners Hong Kong, have agreed collectively to acquire 408. 8 million IPO shares as part of the institutional offering. The offering will close on March 8th and the listing is scheduled for March 22nd. Out of 116.65 million gross proceeds to be raised from the exercise, 62% has been earmarked for new medical centres, satellite clinics and sales representative offices. Alpha IVF also plans to spend 13% on expansion and upgrade of existing facilities. According to Group MD, Dr. Colin Lee Sun Su, Alpha IVF aims to establish three full-fledged fertility centres in Malaysia. He adds that the company also plans to expand internationally by setting up additional specialist centres and four satellite clinics in Indonesia as well as another specialist centre elsewhere in Southeast Asia and two sales representative offices in China. Alpha IVF aims to distribute at least 60% of annual profit as dividends. 
YNH Property, whose lapses in governance raised eyebrows recently after several delayed disclosures, has redesignated its senior independent non-executive director Kong Kam Ho as chairman of its audit committee to help the group in fulfilling its oversight and fiduciary duties. Kong will lead a three-member team to help the board to, among others, assess its processes relating to risks, oversee the group's financial reporting and evaluate the group's internal and external audit processes. YNH said the most immediate and critical task of the audit committee headed by Kong will be to appoint an independent external auditor. Besides the delayed disclosures relating to certain transactions it had undertaken and terminated in 2016 and as recently as April 2022, YNH's previous external auditor, Baker Tilly Montero Heng, had issued a qualified opinion on its financial statements for the 18 months ended June 30, 2023 over its JV and turnkey contracts for property development works. Baker Tilly has, since the conclusion of the group's AGM on December 8, 2023, ceased to be its external auditor after notifying YNH that it did not wish to seek reappointment. The Dr. Yu Kwan Choi Link stock was one of the most badly hit small cap stocks in the market sell-off that began in mid-January, hitting multiple limit downs. It has lost 86% in value since the start of the year. Home Minister Datuk Sri Saifuddin Nasutian Ismail announced on Friday that the government will no longer allow the entry of foreign workers into the formal sector from the active quota, effective June 1st. At a media briefing, he said the active quota for hiring foreign workers, for which levies have been paid but visas with reference have not been issued by the month's end, will be nullified. As a result, employers will receive a refund for the levy payment associated with the cancelled quota. The minister also said the deadline for entry of new formal sector foreign workers workers with VDR is May 31st. Saifuddin said the government is at the same time making significant improvements to the levy repatriation policy and process. He knows that the duration for processing levy refunds at the Immigration Director General's approval stage has been cut by 47%, now only taking 28 days compared to the previous 53 days. Simultaneously, the processing time at the Home Ministry Secretary General approval stage has seen a reduction of 51%, now taking 38 days instead of the previous 77 days.